Cool. Ready? 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 Ready. Ready. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the WTF1 podcast. We're back for episode numero eight. Quite. Yes. <laughs> I was going to go with wheat. something that wasn't gonna French. Eight. <laughs> for the French Grand Prix, if you didn't guess, with the wheat. I'm Matt. I'm Jess. I'm Ali. I'm Tommy. Hey, Ali's back. He's back. Ali, yeah. how's it feel? You're back. Amazing. Yeah, You're back in good the hot to be seat. back in, in my seat. Jack and Sam have gotten out of my seat. I have my seat back. There's a lot riding on you, Ali. It's been, it's been a while. I'm expecting some yeah. serious F1 knowledge. And I'll try not to okay. be too sarcastic about, about WEC. WEC. The, yeah. the people have Spoken. asked for you. I am back. They've about missed three you. Comments, but no. Yeah, <laughs> a, a couple, but I am back. For those I'm sure couple everyone people. will be commenting right now saying, I'm so happy to see Ali back. So I wish he'd leave faster. Or okay, just to show how happy we are yeah. that you're back. Yeah. What's your three-word race review for the French Grand Prix Thank highlights you very much. that you watched? Yeah, yeah, like the highlights that I have watched. <laughs> um, uh, uh, well, that's okay, that's one. Wow. This is a great start. <laughs> great start. Welcome <laughs> back, <laughs> Ali. The highlights that I watched and a review on the highlights. A review. Okay, come on. Three words. You've picked the person again that doesn't have a three-word race review. <laughs> uh, made me... L- no. <laughs> made <Words>. me know. <laughs> made <Words>. you know. <laughs> I was going to go for a four-word race review then. Didn't quite work. That's not uh, three. Uh, uh, thanks, France. <laughs> That's two. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, damn this it. is great content. Sorry, okay, thank, okay, thanks, Paul Ricard. Oh, you there you there. go. You got oh four to two. That was incredible. Wow. Oh I love that. Thanks, Thanks France. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Oh, that I was, was trying to think of the third word. What a start to the podcast. Okay, Tommy. Welcome back, Ali. Thanks. No, wait, wait, wait. Welcome Welcome back, Ali. Doesn't uh, Ali want to tell us why he's saying thanks, poor Ricard? Go on, and why are you thanking poor Ricard? Because it was an awesome race by the looks of it. Um, <laughs> 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 it was genuinely quite cool. I mean, the, I think a lot of people didn't like the large runoff areas and all the painted mm. track but actually looking back at the uh, back at the highlights it actually looked quite cool to see yes people went off but a lot of people then regave positions and and the like but it meant that they weren't into a wall and out of the race um or they were able to of course let off but then again they were right on the tail of whoever they'd let back in front of them so i think it allowed for some quite awesome racing Okay. That's why I'm saying thanks. Interesting for points. I disagree with most of them. Tommy. Uh, that was unexpected. That was unexpected. Yeah, okay. All right. And there's a lot of syllables in that last yeah. one. Uh, oh, okay. It's yeah. allowed. Well, unexpected because you thought yeah, it was going to be similar, boring? Similar to Ali, I think I've never heard so much negativity mm. towards a race ever. Not, not Monaco. <laughs> oh. No, because there's quite a lot of like, hype around Monaco, yeah. isn't it? Cause yeah. It's yeah. Like, fair Fair F1. play, Apart like from this couch. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that couch. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, and yeah. Okay, the the track's not the greatest in the world, but everyone was already writing it off, saying, "Oh, we need a chicane," all this kind of stuff. And it was a good race. So yeah, nice. Well done, Paul Rickard. Well, well, yeah, that's four. Thanks. Jess, not you ready? Okay. You're prepared. I'm to speak in three. Words. Nice gorilla trophy. Yes. Fancy a Heineken. Fancy a Heineken. <laughs> <laughs> For anyone that didn't see, we had an amazing slow mo <laughs> sent in, which oh made yeah. me laugh. I, I was listening to it on the train today, and it was ju- I was just howling. And, uh, if anyone wants to w- listen to it in half speed, do it, because we sound it's hilarious. absolutely pissed. Anyway, yeah. Jess, back to you. <laughs> yeah, nice gorilla trophy, because I don't think I've ever seen a trophy That's that looks quite trophies. like that. Yeah, it's odd. I, to- I thought it was cool. I thought yeah. it was a joke. I, I genuinely thought, I thought it was, was a joke. Yeah, yeah, I was like... Oh no! It's for the it's the Pirelli fastest lap trophy. And then I was like, no, no, that's no, no. I can see the writing on it. And then obviously they got handed yeah. out like on the. It t- does look like ceremony. it came out of a Kinder Egg or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Giant Kinder Put Egg. It together. You have to yeah. build it yourself. It's kind of cool though. Like if you if you think of uh, yeah, trophy cabinets and whatever, that is going to stand out. Yeah. That bright gorilla. <laughs> With the gorilla. A Pirelli. Gorilla butt. Yeah. Tommy was saying that it's got like a proper yeah, butt. It's peachy yeah. bum. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Peachy nice. Butt. I, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't check out the gorilla's butt. That's, that's so the yeah. one that you focused in on, yeah? <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. Was a fa- nice. it was a famous um, artist, like a famous sculptor, that made the full-size one that was on the track. But There's a few on the track. There's one on the yeah. podium, there's a few on the track as Do well. Do we know why a gorilla? No. No? A gorilla's mm. from France? I, I don't know. <laughs> My three-word race review was... Uh, is? Was? Is Magni Core who? Yeah. Oh, yes. wrecked. Uh, because I, actually, coming into the Grand Prix, I was very much against this whole Paul Ricard. Just seeing the layout, seeing 
the way in which you know there was a chicane on the straight and it just kind of leading up to it i very much did join in on the hype of the negativity mm. but um after watching the race after having the chicane which i think improved the racing if anything mm. you know if we'd had that long straight people i don't know if they would have been able to tuck back into the slipstream and got back past again or whether it would have just been embarrassing and they would be half a second down the road by the end of end of the uh, end of the straight but either or I, I thought it was a very very good race um for what was very low expectations you know it was one out of ten they expected was, yeah in the driver's briefing uh, i think there was a tweet that came out that during the driver's briefing there was discussions about how to make paul ricard the, the french grand prix better and one of the suggestions was bring back manicore and that was before <laughs> the race so people <laughs> were already writing the race off before it even started That's ridiculous i think people were I think I saw a tweet about, I think it was, I can't remember who said this now, maybe Karun Chandok, but they were saying how if they had the long straight, if Bakus can have such a long straight, but such great a racing. That's a coffee machine getting involved. <laughs> that is a coffee Sorry, machine getting involved, yeah. Um, a, a great race where um, cars are able to get on a slipstream, get in front, and then the car they've overtaken is again in the slipstream to then be able to overtake again for the first corner. That's why I think people were saying, why have the chicane and not just the long straight? Is that you could have a possibility of two overtakes and cars constantly changing and swapping, and swapping and and yeah, I couldn't see uh, that happening though no. like Vettel going past a Haas there's no way a Haas would get him back would they really no and I think it was a good addition to be honest and F2 was crazy like mm. watching them having to <laughs> just the map people just went straight on because it was raining in their race as well mm. and we didn't get any rain there was a um, yeah. I think it was practice and it, of course it was Kimi Raikkonen actually used the wrong because there's 167 mm -hmm layouts of Paul Rickard. That, that yeah. 167, 167 different insane. layouts. Oh my God. And uh, there's a, a during free practice Kimmy, oh Kimmy goes he went and to turn left, turns and yeah. then goes, oh wait, it's not that chicane, carries on. Yeah, that's bad. Like, yeah. I, I, I liked the, the circuit layout, but there was it just wasn't nice to look at no. for, for a viewer. It's quite it confusing when, because it's a new track as well, you didn't know the layout. Yeah. So you're like, right, where do they go now? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, we'll get on to the circuit. Let's, let's have some three-word race reviews from fans. Uh, mixed Mixed bunch, uh, Keenan underscore Ford waiting for rain. I think we all were, but at the same time, it didn't. It wasn't a make or break no. for, for the race. No. Uh, TP underscore four seven zero reverse order grids. I think that's alluding to F two, and oh, actually no, it's alluding obviously to F Formula One as well. Obviously, in the yeah. fact that um, it showed with Vettel and Bottas coming through the field, um, and F two having the reverse order grids in their in their in their rules. Balthazar Brands one too many Joe collapse, <laughs> alluding I guess to your point about not yep. having many walls which uh, yeah just speaking a bit about that like i don't like the fact there's no walls and there's no punishment for for running off or even gravel you know there, there's obviously a, a, an argument about lance stroll and the fact that he had a tire blowout if th there'd been a wall there or something it would have been pretty pretty terrible like yeah there was so much runoff and the, the 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 strips which are mixed with i think it was was it you that was saying it it's mixed with we've got different like the ab yeah, it's abrasive rough. material it's abrasive. Yeah, yeah, yeah abrasive yeah. material so the blue one is like semi-abrasive but you're probably okay and then the red ones are meant to full-on stop the car yeah um and you did see that with stroll's blowout as mm. soon as he hit the red the car pretty much stopped so it did work yeah, yeah. um but yeah it was it is a bit still a bit strange yeah i think as well like the the start of the race when you had the the incident i know some of them went uh, I think it was Max and Kevin Magnussen just launched it across the first chicane. Mm. And a lot of them did at turn four as well. But if you watch, uh, I think it's Ricardo and Kimi, they actually got disadvantage for trying to stay on the track. Yeah. Because they slowed right down and everyone just breezed around the outside yeah, of them. Yeah, exactly. It's almost that, like, where do you draw the line? Yes, you know, you're not losing a place by just going straight over, but arguably... It's an awk it's an awkward one, and then and then it's just so hard to police. I yeah. found I found it a bit of a farce, to be honest. Just seeing the amount of drivers just flying across mm. the yeah. like it, I thought it, looked sh it looked stupid. Yeah. It was well, a bit of a joke. Arguably, Max got his position. Oh, from Max flying. definitely gained from that. He, he knew what he was doing. He one hundred percent gained. Oh, get in the gained. bin, Tommy. There was I mean, <laughs> there was nowhere for him to gain. go. Yeah, there yeah, was nowhere for him to go. Yeah. But you know, had that been any other circuit, he'd have been in a wall yeah. or in a gravel trap or something. Like he wouldn't have had that exit route so yeah i mean it's not his fault but he the circuit the oh circuit yeah exactly allowed the circuit him allowed him to do to it yeah 100 so yeah. it's not his fault yeah, yeah. but, but it's not going to just plow into the accident no exactly like, no and but 
But if had it been a different circuit, he probably wouldn't have had that option. Yeah, and he absolutely honed it down there as well. There was yeah. no like second. Oh, should I make no? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I'm yeah. out of here. And he See was straight guys. with the P2, and and that was it, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. True. But anyway, let's uh, let's move on to some others. Tanner's two three seven, and actually about ten people. You said Tommy came in with this one. Robert Van Klink and Terza, better than expected, which I think we all agree on. Uh, B and White, right? This is this is a good one. Only five seconds. Let's talk about that incident, Sebastian Vettel, Valtteri Bottas. I genuinely, genuinely believe that, that Vettel deserved a penalty, and I thought five seconds was very lenient, to be honest. Oh. Um, oh, <laughs> I was going to be like, agree, agree. and I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> no I, I genuinely think he deserved the penalty, and I think as Hamilton said in the post-race um, sort of interviews, you know, it's, it's something that is in the rules, and that's probably what he deserved in the rules, but is it something, if you ruin a guy's race... Is that what you should get? Is five seconds? What would you give him? A ten second curiosity. stop and go. Ten second stop and go. Yeah. And that would have stop like and com- go. Yeah. Completely ruined his race. Then he would have been. But maybe that's me being biased purely because the, the cars race was ruined too. are so far ahead that anything less than a ten second stop and go, Vettel would have finished fifth anyway. Yeah, I think like people's argument was Vettel essentially punted Bottas and then still finished ahead of him, but. Yeah. That's like you can't, yeah, you can't just, you can't just penalise someone just because you finished ahead of Bottas. It's like, well, y- you can't just wait, see where Bottas finishes, and then go, okay, Vettel, well, you finished behind him. Like that's that's a stupid thing. I think that the penalty was probably about right because it's it's a turn one incident. It's very clumsy. It's not the kind of thing you expect from a four time champion. But at the end of the day, it's a turn one incident. If it had been halfway through yeah. the race yeah okay i understand people like there's some ridiculous comments people are thinking you should be black flagged and all that kind of stuff yeah, like that that's just crazy. ridiculous but i think five seconds is fair it's just it's just of course he's not going to get that much of a um penalty because they're so much quicker than everyone and they just breeze yeah. through the field i think that's where my sort of opinion comes from is that i wanted to be more than five because it wasn't a penalty in the end really obviously the the main penalty for him was having his front wing smashed off and having to go around and come into the pits again. I mean, it was a massive penalty. He should have got a podium, and he finished fifth. But that yeah, was his still. own fault, so he can't really... Yeah, so he did get a disadvantage. So he did right? get a disadvantage. Yeah, he got a disadvantage, but that's from his own mistake. That shouldn't be kind of put into the penalty factor, in my opinion, and the fact that the cars are so quick. That's why the five-second penalty didn't matter either way. Like It didn't affect his position at all. So maybe that's where I'm coming from in the fact that he needs to be penalised more, but, but I, guess I think it just highlights how kind of alludes That's to true. what Tommy was saying like so so much in F1 is a variable you can't have like you can't ha- you have to have something that is a universal right this is the this is the penalty for this kind of an incident otherwise it's just going to get silly and you're going to have to I mean they do I think the stewards there are different steward members right that all provide a different opinion so you've got like one from the driver's perspective one from the FIA one like they're all they're all there to kind of give an opinion based on the incident at hand that's why for some instances it takes a long time for them to get back with any feedback but you know you can't have it so that like Tommy was saying you know the the reason why i think it seemed so unfair was because Bottas's damage essentially meant that his race was just completely ruined but had he not had as much damage had he had similar damage to Vettel arguably he should have been flying through with Vettel um so I get I get I do understand why people are saying it's unfair but I think like if you start applying really penalties based on damage exactly it's just, just, it's yeah, just yeah. not going to work it should just be as Tommy said I agree completely with Tommy that turn one accident you know Vettel didn't do anything malicious he made a mistake it was his fault he should have been penalized he was penalized and it just so happened that the orders of things didn't it didn't really make too yeah. much of a difference but I think it still it still ruined his race and it still yeah. put Hamilton ahead in the championship yeah. and Vettel now trailing so and you, you don't want to start giving ridiculous penalties for moves at the start to the point where everyone will just exactly. give up on trying to overtake and just go two by two into mm-hmm. the corner exactly. and then we'll, we'll be complaining about boring races that yeah. no one's actually trying yeah. so. and if anything like I think it did rob us of a potentially even better race because Vettel had pace. I think mm. I think Vettel would have taken would it have to Hamilton. In, it would have been interesting to see what would have happened, uh, yeah. Yeah, and it would have been... I think it would have been so exciting. Because I think we've said it before as well. Like it's, it's great to see these midfield moves. and But the front was pretty much unchanged. Mm. 
bar like Raikkonen jumping Vettel, but again, that was because Vettel, Vettel's tyres were however many extra laps mm. old. Yeah. Like, I think it would have been so cool to see Vettel take it to Hamilton and have those two. I mean, that's what we all want, right? We yeah. ultimately want still, those still two. Still waiting for it, really. Yeah, because yeah. every, every switch or change has been one of the drivers either has like not turned up or they've made a mistake during the race and it's cost them quite a few places. I mean, this is what, the third or fourth time it's happened to Vettel? where he's ended up like not even on the podium. Mm. So I just, um, that's what I'm waiting for. I really just want those two to have it out on track. That would be a one. That would be good, wouldn't it? And okay, fair enough. I see your point and I do agree. I think it's more just a frustrated F1 fan than me. It's like, yeah, because of the, ca- the, chas- the chasmic <laughs> gap. That's, that's a word, right? Yeah, the chasmic gap, gap between the top well three. Well, it is now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. You were looking chasm. at me like, well, chasm, is like that a word? I don't know, like the big the big Large gap. gap. The big <laughs> gap between the top three <laughs> this teams. Is, this is, this I've is gone why from <laughs> trying to be like a, a proper English person to... What am I saying? Anyway, <laughs> this is why we don't let Matty <laughs> do any of the writing really on the really website. <laughs> <laughs> You're just the, um, the pretty boy hey, in front of Hey, I actually do a lot, don't you? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Anyway, um, a lot of... Anyway, uh, yeah, but the, the, the top three... <laughs> what? Shut up. The top three teams <laughs> and the rest of the grid. Okay, anyway. The rest of the good. Grid. Grid. Oh, grid. The top okay. three teams, yeah, they, it showcased how ridiculous those top seismic three teams. Seismic gap. Yeah. Seismic. <laughs> mm. Chasm. Yeah. 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 Seismic. Seismic. The chasm seismic gap. sound, chasm. isn't it? What I'm I don't tired, know. all right? I was in early for IBR. Anyway, let's move on to um, another guy who <laughs> had a great race, actually, but got a bit sassy in the press conference. Uh, your boy. My boy. Max Verstappen. Yeah. Um, he actually said for people that didn't see it. Uh, this was in regards to the Vettel Bottas incident we've just spoken about. Honestly, it's not acceptable. That's what they said to me at the beginning of the season, so I think they should do the same. And then, of course, Seb shouldn't do anything and just drive again and learn from this and go on. That's my advice to everyone in the room. And this was kind of uh, very much a, a jokey side of it. Yeah, but there was complete, an edge to it. People completely missed the mark on that. There was a lot of Vettel fans that got really kind of, that thought he was having a go at Vettel. Mm. And it was, it was actually no, him just having a go at the media, the media to say yeah. like, Look, you've rinsed me for these moves, and uh, look, a four-time world champion still makes mistakes going into turn one. So, give yeah. me a break. He's when clearly still annoyed by it. But still a bit cheeky, because <coughs> like, yes, yes, Vettel made a mistake, and um, I don't think I think what all of so us not eight in a row, <laughs> yes. and not eight in a row, and he's he was until that uh, that mistake leading the world championship. But so when was Verstappen's last mistake into turn one? <laughs> Quiet. <laughs> but then I don't know if it's true or not, but all the mistakes I can remember of Verstappen are not on turn one, lap one. But incidents. exactly the point, right? So turn one, you're going to get incidents because the cars are all bunched. Cars? <laughs> the cars are all bunched together. <laughs> yeah. So I think a turn one incident is more forgivable than a, than a later on incident. If you think like Shanghai when he went right up the inside and on the after the long straight on the hairpin and yeah. wiped out the Ferrari. Like exactly. Th- through the race. Yeah. And you've made that mistake. Yeah. But lap one, turn one things are going to happen which is what happened to Vettel so that's what I think that he's taken it t- way too far and thinks that him and he sh- Vettel should have as much of a media madness as what he had but his were always th- was, as far as I can remember always through the race and yeah. not lap one yeah. it's a bit of like an arrogant way of him kind of being like well oh, look, look, me, I, yeah. look yeah. I, I'm sorting it out now like yeah, it was, it's weird yeah, it was a weird it's a comment a weird like, like, I didn't I really need to be said can like you blame him a, though you can't blame no, him can you no because he's young and he's and he's Essentially fire, been thrown yeah. right into the fire pit and gone, oh, wow. And he, he, he definitely would read all the, the crash stuff and jokes and all that kind of stuff. Clearly, you could tell that he'd Max seen all that stuff. Yeah. I think it was just, he, well, obviously, every media question that he ever got was, are you going to calm down yet? Are you going to yeah, learn from your so mistakes yeah. yet? So he's like, well, you go tell Vettel that then. Yeah. So obviously, like, it's, I don't think there's really much to read into it other than, like, He's having his day, and we'll see at the end of the season where he ends up. Yeah, he's back on track. So, and he had a great performance. Literally, I think, yeah. he at the French Grand Prix. So, <laughs> another person that had a great performance. No excuse to uh, talk about him. Charles. Oh, Charles. Oh, Charles. 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 How Leclerc. long have we got left? <laughs> Charles Leclerc. <laughs> yeah, the, the last this remaining the twenty first. minutes is the Matt podcast about Charles. <laughs> <laughs> and Ali, now it's Ali time just for. Casually dropping in. Yeah, you've got twenty minutes left, by the way. Just, just so, just so, just <laughs> stop talking about Charles. Um, Jessica Kroner. Charles the man. Yeah, I agree. Oh, <laughs> is it, isn't that Charles, <laughs> what a man. Charles the man? Oh. Charles the man. Like, Got you. Yeah, like Charles the man. Yeah. 
at Curtis Lamar. Prosser. Is it time Raikkonen was replaced at Ferrari? Leclerc put in another stellar performance and drove the wheels off the Sauber. Surely that puts him in good stead. I read that as salad. Wow, I'm tired. Good salad. Puts him in good salad. Good salad. Well, that Ferrari have been looking to replace Raikkonen for the past five seasons. But what? Have more? They, they? Have for, they? for me... Well, well, yeah. Raikkonen is an inc- like an amazing Ferrari <laughs> driver. No, say incredible. Come on. Incredible Ferrari driver because they're exactly what Ferrari need. Yeah. It's a bit like Bottas and Hamilton. It's a bit like Bottas. Yeah, he's like the... He's I, a definite and number I love, two driver. I love Raikkonen. I've always loved Raikkonen. But he is at the moment perfect for Ferrari because if Vettel messes up like he did, Raikkonen's there to get the points. Or if, if Vettel doesn't mess up, he's normally, again, right behind Vettel to get in the points, either on the podium in fourth or fifth or whatever. Arguably a little bit better there because I think Kimi's now got the record for most, most podiums, podiums without, without winning, winning yeah. a race yeah. in like a time frame. And you think, surely, like all the things that have happened to Vettel in the last two or three years, surely he must have, like, must be winning a race at some point soon, but it's not really it's even not come close, it's really. It's, it's, it, you know, do you say that's just the cards haven't fallen in his favour, but you just think like there's been so many opportunities for him to get pole, mm. for him to just run away with the race, have a nice bit of Jitango <laughs> there, Ali. <laughs> um, yeah, you sure. Know, and yeah. I, I think Kimi is, is, is way past his best now. Like McLaren, I think, was very much the peak of his yeah. performances. Um, obviously, he, he won the championship with Ferrari, which was close, but... It's time for him to move on, I think. He's not... He, I know what you mean. He's a great Ferrari number two driver, but he's not even that good in the sense that he's not close to Vettel a he's lot of the time. He's not picking up wins he's every time. Yeah, Vettel he's not... Failures all w- yeah. Or yeah. And, yeah, they're not... With, with they've not been close to really winning the Constructors title, even when Vettel ran Hamilton pretty close that year. You know, it's not... And with Vettel and Bottas crashing in that race, you've got to expect Kimi to at least get in P2. Really, y- in yeah. realistically, y- he needs to beat Verstappen, but because of his qualifying p- P6 in a Ferrari, like yeah, and Leclerc was eighth. Yeah, yeah, and Leclerc was ahead of Kimi by the, the turn three turn, or whatever. Yeah. I know it was y- a bit carnage. I don't know. I don't know if you got the same sense. And I don't know if it is just because of all the the chat about Charles, but <laughs> it, you did his. He was very decisively, mo- like he moved pretty decisively around Charles, and like it was, it was, it was very much like no, you're not getting past me. No, like, I am still the Ferrari driver. Did anyone get that sense? Like, when, we they, were, when they were on track, yeah, it was very much like, I don't know, yeah. I just got the sense that he was he had, he had a point to prove. Charles? No. Kimmy. Kimmy. Oh, Kimmy yeah, just, uh, sorry. Yeah, I, I didn't notice confused. that, but I did see, I think we did have a tweet, I can't remember if it was in that list, but I, yeah. we did have a tweet along the lines of like, oh, did Raikkonen really like, you know, get his elbows out and kind of prove, you know, I should be in this Ferrari seat, but... <laughs> I mean it's, it's hard to read him though, now. isn't it? Because yeah. he just, whenever you, s- whenever <coughs> media speaks to him, he's just very laid back about everything. So it's, I think it's very difficult to get a sense of whether he cares or not. I'm sure he must do. He, I think he does. Um, but but he's, he's always just very much, yeah, I just get in the car and I drive and I'll come home and I yeah, eat I d- ice cream. What I, <laughs> what I notice I in a lot of, her, of his press sort of um, uh, interviews is he's obviously very chilled and whatever, but there's always, it could have been better. He yeah. always says that when yeah. it's qualifying the race, I could have been better. So I feel like he does want, yeah, he does want to win. Mm. But I just don't think he's got it in the tank, especially no. against Vettel. But then what? What will Leclerc? Leclerc is, will is he? Cause a is, storm. He, is he? Yeah, I think he's going to be awesome if he goes to Ferrari. But is, is he just right going to be yeah. Vettel's bitch? And then you go, like, what can he prove? Like would it would it be better for him to go <coughs> to Haas <coughs> first? Because I mean, I mean, Magnussen had a pretty quick. yeah. Magnussen great had a great point, race. Jess. At FJL Cabral, is Grosjean at risk of being dropped from Haas? You think Ferrari has enough power for a mid-season swap between him and Leclerc? I think mid-season oh, is I don't probably know about mid-season. I, I think, think Grosjean's got to go. Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. hundred percent. Mid-season. Did he yeah. score yeah. a point? He did score. A point. No, he, he didn't. No, he no. didn't. <laughs> Miss out again. I think Grosjean's got to go. I just, I can't like. I think you know we 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 were talking about Baku and how it was unlucky and um, what was after Baku I've lost. You've been it in qua- you've been in qualifying, didn't you? Yeah. Have you been it in qualifying? Was it qualifying? Hey, Grosjean. Or practice. No, yeah. Grosjean Q, Q, it. Q, yeah. What, uh, yeah. Q3. Sorry. Yeah. He so he scr- it. and he screwed Magnussen's lapper. Yeah. And then, and then he like got a penalty him. for crashing into Ocon during the race, and then he was also his 
moaning on the radio is just absolutely ridiculous. Like, yeah. You know the Bottas move? Yeah, moaning about Bottas. There was, there was a perfectly legitimate overtaking. It's like, did you see what he speed. did? It's like, yes, he overtook you quite cleanly. And he, li- he lit up the rear wheels slightly on the, yeah. on the exit, mm. but that's about it. Didn't even, he just, he just came over. He was like, you're not coming back past. Like yeah, he just any other racing driver would. Yeah. 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 But obviously, he's like, oh, this is unfair. I don't like yeah. mid-season switches of drivers, though. I like if you're, I give you're in there Clare spoken Clare like a true Hartley fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For, for <laughs> yeah. I'm still holding out on that. <laughs> I think Go I think Hartley. it's a bit it's a bit of a mix up and it's a bit of a weird situation. But ultimately, teams have to think about <coughs> are they going to get to the end of the season with any points behind a certain driver? And if they're not, if you don't if you don't perform, you get fired. Like that's mm. literally it. That's what happened to Kvyat. That's what happened potentially to Grosjean, maybe. And hopefully happen. to Hartley. <laughs> and maybe to Hartley. <laughs> Why hopefully? Wow. Why not hopefully. hopefully. He does seem like a really nice guy, but at the same time, he's just, he's just not good enough to be an F1. <sighs> We've said this before, and I, I'm saying it again. This is, seems like it's like <laughs> new. Yeah. Always new. back to Hartley. Yeah. I mean, I think there's better drivers that can be in, in that Toro Rosso. Anyway, don't know why we've moved on to Toro Rosso. With McLaren. Mm. Wow. Wow-wee. <laughs> Wow-wee. Oh, wow. Grosjean Paul weekend. What about McLaren? That was... Um, Terrible, wasn't it? Really, I'm, I'm actually shocked that I think every I saw so many tweets that were like, "I can't." I think we all started watching F1 at a similar time. If, it would blow my mind if you told me that Williams and McLaren, McLaren, McLaren would, would be yeah. the yeah. back market teams. It, wow, like it's horrible what, fall from no. grace, isn't it? Yeah, it's it really crazy. Is. Um, at Fraser Lloyd two this time next year, where will Fernando be? In IndyCar. Yeah, Rallycross. In IndyCar. <laughs> Rallycross, yeah. Yes, in Rallycross. <laughs> that actually seems like... He'll go for the quadruple the potential. Crown. What, Rallycross? Yeah. yeah. Like, have you seen his tweets? Yeah. yeah he yeah. keeps tweeting and stuff about it. He's saying he wants to. Uh, he'll at least have a test drive or something. I think yeah. he's just like, I'm just going to try anything because yeah, I can get a win now. everywhere else apart from F1. He's yeah. doing a Sebastian Loeb. He'll win, you know, he's he'll win everyone and then he's yeah, going to yeah. go and try we'll the most well, Pikes Peak. I, and I forgot to mention it in the last podcast when we were talking about Alonso mm. and what, what he's doing, but I genuinely don't see the point of him being in F1 anymore because no. the, it's woeful. Like It's just appalling to watch him in a car like that. He's going after the Triple Crown, which is awesome. Like I think it's one of the coolest things that mm-hmm. anyone's done in motorsport for a long time. Just, you just know, go and, just get go and do go it and properly, do it properly and just you're just wasting your time in F1. You're ruining all your stats, and people are going to just look at your career and go like, oh, why was he finishing 13th? Like he'll and he'll 14th win the World Championship race. this year. Go and yeah. win IndyCar next year, and then the year after, go and do WRX, and you'll have four under your belt, and then go and do whatever you MotoGP. want. MotoGP. Well, did you hear the the latest uh, rumor about IndyCar? Is that um, McLaren are trying to get an IndyCar drive for him, and the only team that will let him do it is obviously powered by Honda. And because Honda, uh, because Alonso talked so much smack about Honda, they're reluctant to open arms and yeah, let them have their and again, yeah. and again yeah. what we were talking about in the last Burning podcast bridges, yeah. you burn bridges you can't yeah. go back and now yeah if that's his whether only whether that's true or in, not I don't know but yeah it would be it's it's an unfortunate situation that they've got to go yeah sorry we uh, slated you and arguably unfairly because look what they're doing now yeah. um, but can we have an engine for IndyCar please yeah. I think it's also the same thing yeah. as I, from my point of view that is, yes, bad, but it, I think that Honda could look at it the same way that Toyota looked at taking him on board rather than keeping the original crew together, is that Toyota will always be remembered as the team that helped Alonso get his triple crown. Mm. So, yes, there's bad publicity between what he's done with Honda in the past in the last couple of years of F1, but if he goes to IndyCar and wins in a honda power car IndyCar, it'll always be... Not there necessarily is like in the limelight, but yeah. it, they'll it be immortalised. Yeah, yeah. Like yes. Yes. Honda helped. Honda will save a lot of their reputation that they have destroyed in the last few years in F1 mm. potentially by by, by helping Indy get. I mean, sorry, not Indy. Alonso get the Indy Championship. Yeah, and but and I can also crown. understand like you, you've chat shit about us. Like, come yeah, on, fair like, enough. yeah, don't yeah. don't come to us asking for a car. I think it's a catch twenty two. I think there's equal kind of opinions on both sides yeah and, it's just and what it's also proved this year is that it wasn't just honda mclaren are just as bad as honda were in terms of p- performance. they're having a nightmare yeah. there was yeah. Bu- did you see the thing from bullier as well that he said we need a works engine to fight for the championship it's like you've just left a works engine yeah 
uh, they seem completely clueless at the moment. It's and you were telling really me something about Honda, uh, McLaren and Freddo's. Freddo's? Yeah. Freddo Gate. Freddo Gate was a bit... Uh, I it's don't obviously it, rumour in here. Yeah, so it's all like, it's all rumour, but there was a bit of a story that came out that was um, uh, a McLaren employee spoke to the Daily Mail and claimed that um, the situation was so bad they were given chocolate bars when they were doing well and stuff. And... Um, but Freddo. only one each. But only one and each. Freddo, strictly one each, and yeah, it's, not even it's a all Snickers. kind of yes, yeah, it's, it's not it's not a good situation by the sound of it. And it's probably all a pack of lies. But then apparently the reason for that is because McLaren banned them from press conferences or it's something. All I don't media know. Politics, it's all isn't it? yeah. it's all media politics. Yeah, you just. But know. I thought it was quite funny anyway. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's funny. It's a funny, it's a funny situation. It's not a funny situation. It's, just, it's just hilarious yeah. that if it is. If it was really Freddo's, has that been like confirmed that they were given Freddo's? I think it's Freddo's. It's <laughs> such a funny. It's a because such a Freddo British thing as Freddo's well. Freddo's at the best of time are a touchy subject. Yeah, yeah. No, because we, well, I mean, we all know yeah, Freddo should be ten p. English, you know, they yeah. should be ten p. That's a big bonus these days, isn't it, Freddo's? Mm. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah I think they're like <laughs> almost forty p nowadays. Jeez. Don't, don't my don't. childhood within me childhood the, the child within me anyway um, you're right Matty. no i'm not da daniel apt <laughs> actually did the funniest thing uh, i think all weekend which was related to alonso um where he tweeted uh alonso probably after the race this was the greatest spin of my career no one can do it better obviously in relation to him and vettel going side by side and then him spinning on the curb <laughs> what did we make of that tweet well i loved the fact that he, uh, people are replied. picking up on it now aren't they Alon I, I mean what alonso must have just been like sat on twitter for yeah. a couple of hours just replying to everyone because i've never seen him so active on twitter after a yeah. race mm. but um i think the thing is like i kind of wish daniel hadn't have backed down because yeah. he essentially just went oh my yeah. god it's actually but alonso yeah. and then backed down i was like I no think you most people would have <laughs> yeah, yeah in me, me included yeah, like, oh, yeah. sorry, so sorry. oh my god i'm so sorry <laughs> you're a great driver um but yeah i kind of like it, it was just funny to see I mean, obviously, Alonso still has such an impact on other, not just drivers, but, mm. you know, in general, in the motorsport world and fans and stuff. But I do kind of wish that Daniel hadn't backed down. Yeah. Mm. Get some beef. But it was funny. It was good yeah, to watch. It was, a funny, it was funny good to watch, like, Alonso just blow up everyone's Twitter. Like, I <laughs> found it yeah. funny that Alonso was searching his own name or uh, seen it come up because he wasn't yeah. tagged in it. No, like, he wasn't he's tagged in he's it. He's clearly so, yeah. found that so in some Unless he follows somewhere. Daniel Apt. Maybe. Or someone that he follows would have liked it. Oh, yeah. Essentially, there's or all kinds of algorithms. Like but I found it funny either way. Yeah, yeah. So it's good. good. Uh, let's quickly talk about Paul Ricard as a circuit in general. Mm. Um, AJ Lewis, one, two, three, four, five, says, what is your honest opinions on the race and the track? And do you think they should get rid of the chicane for next year, I'm assuming? No, I no. I don't, I don't no. think they should get rid of the chicane. No. I no. As I said earlier, I think it improved it, if anything. Well, be before yeah. they went, sorry, before they went there, um, when I saw that whole layout, I would have thought that they should have gone taken the first right and gone the long way around. There's loads of different chicanes, isn't there? Like Yeah, there is. There's 162 yeah. different yeah. varieties. You, you 167. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Missed the final five. That's all right. We're on Twitter right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, have, you have the first right, and then there's the left, which Reichland failed to go or thought it was going down. And then the next left is the actual track. Yeah. If they take the first right, they loop back round again to, to go the left and onto then. the left and then so it's like a big sounds like direction S. I'm literally so lost right now yeah. yeah so it's the right rather than anyway good I job, know where good you job there you was only good job there yeah. was only one road into the circuit eh oh that was, oh, that was a nightmare I actually have had yeah that, that's the layout that needs to be changed not yeah. the actual track <laughs> <Yeah>. jeez <laughs> well, how could 5,000 people that? trying to get to FP1 and well, yeah, the grandstands were empty you get stuck in a car park at Silverstone for two hours just trying to get out and they have actually decent roads getting in and out of it well, at least you see it. It's just getting out afterwards, which is yeah, a bit sure. yeah. pain. If you but need to yeah, see how bad it was, go on uh, fake Charlie Whiting's Twitter page. He was out there, right? And he, he came all the way from, I think he's from Canada? Um, America. Or Somewhere America, America, yeah. North America. Uh, to watch the race. And he drove in. It took him, I think it was like six, five or six hours just to get there for free practice. Took him so long. Got there. It was apparently an hour walk once you parked your car anyway. And they said uh, the marshals said, like, oh, take a bottle of water because it's a long walk barely saw anything went back and he didn't even go to qualifying or the race because it was that bad and okay. so many pictures i've seen online people just didn't bother going because it was that bad all Which the videos appalling. as well in the car parks yeah. and on the roads of just thousands of cars all just tooting their horns at each other it's well, ridiculous be fuming. Yeah. yeah and the thing is as well i think like ross braun came out afterwards saying um that 
that F1 and the circuit promoters are working on ways to improve this for next year. But as of yet, I mean, this could have all changed by the time this goes out, but as of yet, I've not seen anything of anybody apologizing. No, or they, they had a statement that was not apologetic. It's not apologetic at all, is it? Was, it, it, it was really bad. But, but I hope they, they reimburse yeah. the people that couldn't yeah, get yeah, there. Definitely. Like, that is appalling. And yeah. it's so bad for the sport because, I mean, so many people already don't go to live Grand Prix mm. because of all the things that you have to go through mm. as a fan. I mean, I still think that it way outweighs, like to be there is just incredible. And to watch live racing is amazing. I mean, we've, uh, Jack, who's behind the camera filming us, we, when is you came out it? with us to Baku, you, you appreciated the live racing. So um, He's nodding. I yeah. think, you know, it, it's, it's a completely different experience than from Imagine watching at home. Imagine if you for the first time though, for that. And you you would never, five you'd hours never ago, even never watch F1 again. again. No, you no. wouldn't. It's just, yeah, bad experiences like that are just killer. And you know, it, F1's not cheap. No. And so who, was, who was the person that signed the deal with Paul Ricard just before he left? It was Bernie, wasn't it? So I saw some tweets that was like, it was a massive F you to Liberty from Bernie saying like, I'm going to sign a deal with a track with that's this. not ready to host yeah. Formula One. Good luck. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that does sound like a Bernie thing to do. Yeah. 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 yeah but, oh, I mean, I haven't actually seen the statement, so I, I'm not particularly informed. But as you've said, you know, it's not apologetic, which no. infuriates me more than the actual problem itself. They yeah. should have been like, they were after FP1, they should have been apologetic. Like straight away, they should have been like, Especially oh my God, we can't believe this. We're so sorry. Yeah. And Ross Braun is meant to be all about fan. He's meant to, part of his job mm. is meant to be about how fans can better enjoy F1. So regardless or not like, there's, there's only so much you can do about infrastructure of, of tracks, but if you know however many thousands of people are going to be trying to get to one place all at the same time, those tracks need to be have the facilities to cope with that. Mm. Look at Silverstone. Silverstone was almost wiped off the calendar because it wasn't deemed to Manicor have Manicor was enough. wiped off the calendar because of that reason. Exactly. Yeah. So and I know there's always a money issue or whatever, but, you, you know, don't... It, sh it just shouldn't be allowed and I don't know it, it can't it can't have been an afterthought they must have known about this yeah. they must they have known about roads, this like, surely yeah. I mean the there's logistics. one road apparently into the circuit and if you if you read any tweet written reply to like the Paul Rickard account or whatever it's just savage it just, does, it just like, does nothing like no angry. one no one is going to want to go to the French Grand Prix no. next year and unless there's the, I would only ever go if I knew that roads had been built but even then, you'd probably wait a year yeah. to see how, how it's actually yeah. laid yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. But That's there you go. Yeah, anyway, simmering our anger down. Let's move on to driver of the day. Not Vettel. Vettel won the fan vote somehow. <laughs> that was hilarious. That, that just shows what we spoke about, I think, in a couple of... Hello? Someone, <laughs> <laughs> someone being in a glass? Ding, ding. <laughs> Uh, Who wants to be in the podcast? <laughs> Edwin, are you also triggered by yeah. Vettel being driver of the yeah. day? Um, that everyone loves a uh, comeback drive to the point where even if someone punts someone at turn one, they get driver of the day just because and they've come back through the field. reasoning was, was that, oh, came because Vettel came back through the field. Yeah, but he made a mistake in the best, like one of the yeah. best cars in the field. That, let's be honest, like him and Bottas, like, they were just breezing past people on the street. Yeah, yeah. And, it's and it Bottas was damaged too, mm. and he was still getting a fair, fair old way through. So Pretty funny. Yeah, it was. So Shouldn't what, who, be who, driver of the day. Who would be your driver of the day then, Jess? Ooh. Lewis. <laughs> Lewis. <laughs> is the boring choice. Is the boring right. choice, yeah, but boring he choice. he didn't put a foot wrong. And, and, he was and everything as well. everything that we said, I still don't know if his heart's fully in it, but you know, maybe it was because he doesn't have the pressure of his new single being released with uh, Christine Aguilera this this time. Did what? you not hear about this? No, and I don't want to. I so, don't, uh, I don't hear any of this. apparently, so Christina Aguilera has released a new track. With and a mysterious rapper that with is 100% Lewis Hamilton. It's a mysterious, <laughs> no a mysterious yeah, rapper. Yeah, you can tell it's him, yeah. What Find it, it on YouTube. X, XDNA or something. I need to or look at XNDA yeah, right or... Right search so search for it. The track's called up. Pipes. Oh. Search for... Go on YouTube and search for Pipes. And because I listened to it, I sent it to you and I listened to it and I was like... Oh, like this mysterious rapper. It's probably Lewis. And the second he starts, you're like, this is 100%. It's 100% you know Lewis. It's him oh no. Lewis. Yeah. I, re so I, re I really <laughs> wish that we could <laughs> play it rapper, on, on rapper the air. Rapper of the day. Is we'll get sued. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll listen to it. Rapper and then of the day is Lewis wait. Hamilton. No, oh yeah. I was, no. I was saying maybe he doesn't have the pressure of that this weekend, oh over looming over his head. But um, no, I think he, he had a fault this weekend. 
Um, you did, to be fair. So that's why he's my driver of the day. Ali, who was your driver of the highlights? <laughs> <laughs> uh, driver of the highlights. Uh, I, as far as, well, I think Science did quite well. Raikkonen and I did, um, did quite well. And um, Hamilton did quite well. Uh, that's not one driver. That's not one. Uh, Somebody uh, says Hartley. I'm going to say <laughs> ha- Raikkonen. <laughs> Ra- oh, Raikkonen. Oh, wow. Get Bora. back to watching Weck. Tommy. Uh, <laughs> Hamilton's a boring option, <laughs> but shout out to K-Mag as well. He was pretty yeah. good. And also Science drove a pretty decent race. So I'm who's your pick? Hamilton, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. There's a timer going off. There's some serious noises. Um <laughs> I don't know if that's even coming up on the microphone, but it's going did 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 did. Uh, so my so yours was Hamilton. Mine, yeah. mine, my favourite driver of the day. Yeah, Charles. Yeah, Charles. Okay, no, sh- shout out to Charles. He did he did awesome. Driver of the but weekend. But he could have driven better, as he said himself in the uh, interviews. I saw him a couple of times flying Personally. off the racetrack. Um, <laughs> Um, when you, know, when you, you spoke know. to him on Twitter. No. Yeah, you when you called him up afterwards. Okay. okay, he actually wants to come on the podcast, just so you guys know. So, I mean, it's, it's well, 100% cool. it's we'll have cool. him on. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah, he wants to come on. That's all that matters. Uh, we'll, we'll get the rest sorted. Um, so, my driver of the day n- isn't Charles, c- um, b- purely because I can't go for Charles every time. I think that's the biggest bombshell um, of this whole podcast. I know, right? Bam. No, it'd be even bigger if you said Hartley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you couldn't pay me enough money to say Hartley. Uh, my driver of the day was Carlos Sainz. Uh, he drove a fantastic start of the race and he did everything he possibly could with the car that he was given. So Carlos Really unlucky as well at the end. Yeah, oh, massively unlucky. He would have finished P6. Al- he, was, he was lucky that they got the virtual safety car. Yeah. Yeah. He was like, he's luckier than he was unlucky, but he was definitely lucky. Like yeah. Also, again, outperforming Hulkenberg. Yeah. Hulk needs yeah. to go. Hulkenberg had a poor qualifying. All oh, right, let's just chill oh, out. The, the he the was opinions. in WEC as well. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, he did Le Mans. Give him let's a chance. Not, uh, he won time? Le Mans. Let's not, get into, let's not get into that. Do you not feel the same way about Alonso, though? No. <laughs> Why, though? Because Alonso did because the greatest quadruple stint yeah. in the middle of the race. Alonso yeah. did an incredible quadruple oh, he stint. He was actually fast. Oh, against the knight. In, oh, in Le Mans, compared to uh, Hulkenberg. He yeah. was the standout driver. Who were you comparing it to? Oh, his teammate. Yeah. I'm only baiting, what? Ali. Yeah. I'm just saying that like, Alonso, who, who was he racing, Ali? No, I, I'm saying Alonso was actually fast as compared to Hulkenberg, who wasn't. Oh, was he not? But no. he still won Le Mans. Well, he had two great teammates. I don't know why we're talking about Le Mans. Who cares? <laughs> How has Ali managed to do this? <laughs> <laughs> we missed out on a Le Mans podcast. We yeah, have to do it now. We did, yeah, we had, to, we had to speak a little bit just so that you didn't cry. Um, so predictions. Last time we all said that Mercedes were going to win. Um... I said Bottas, and then I think you said Bottas. I think I changed and I my think mind. At the last Jess minute. was the only one to correctly guess Hamilton. Uh, I correctly guessed uh, Raikkonen in third, but that was about it. We're rubbish at predictions. We're However, not very good, are we? Austria predictions go. Wow, good, Alistair. Uh, Mercedes <laughs> again, and un- unfortunately, I think it's power track, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Hamilton, Bottas, Raikkonen. Okay. Where's Vettel? Is he going to crash out again? No, I think he'll just have a bit of a, bit of a, shock a down yeah. day. Okay. Halley? R- uh, I'm going to go for the highlights. Uh, Ricardo. <laughs> on Hamilton. the Red Bull ring. On oh, the power track. Red Bull ring. Come on. Yeah, Red Bull ring. Rubbish Red Bull ring. <laughs> Conspiracies. Uh, exactly. Uh, yeah, Ricardo, Hamilton, Bottas. Ricardo out of nowhere. Ricardo, yeah. wow. Um, so not even just okay. wait. Okay. Hold my bit. Uh, I'm going to go for, a b- I think Austria is going to be a pretty straightforward Grand Prix. So I'm going to go Lewis Vettel Bottas. Lewis Vettel Bottas. Okay. I'm going to go with Lewis L- Hamilton Bottas Vettel. You're not on first name terms with Lewis. No. But no, you are with Charles. Yeah. Oh, Charles. <laughs> okay, Charles P3. <laughs> 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 it's going to happen. That is it. Cool. Thank you very much, guys. Wait, which one am I outroing to? The left one, Ali? I yes. remember you telling me yes, now. Yes, the left one. Don't look yeah. at the wrong one. You no. were touching that one, so that's why it put me off. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching this episode <laughs> 8 WTF1 podcast. It's been an absolute pleasure once again. Uh, the French Grand Prix is done. And we're only like, what, how many days till we do it again? Depends seven. Week. Seven. Yeah. This is going Six, out. seven. What, one. Six or seven. One. one. This is going out on Wednesday. So oh, yeah. Next, one day will be Thursday. <laughs> One day away. Yay. Yay. Cool. More right, we'll see you next time for the Austrian GP. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye, Dan. Dan's waving from behind the camera. Bye. You need to go to bed, Matty. Yes. You need what?
He needs to go to sleep. You need to go to sleep. You need a chasmistic Okay, I had like two or three words. Chasmistic sleep. There was quite a few there. What was there? What's that? Did I did I mess up my words then? No. Oh. Okay. But the fact that you can't even remember what you said. Oh is no, but uh, I, that's because I genuinely didn't even process it. Okay.